Welcome to the channel, I'm Evan, this is Origin Painting, and you're watching The First Founding Project. This is part 5 of this series, and let's see what the randomizer says. Raven Guard it is. Now let me just back up a little bit. The First Founding Project, it's something I'm doing for myself. My goal is to paint one marine from each of the Loyalist First Founding chapters. On screen you'll get to see the paints that I'm using. If you'd like to mimic this, try it yourself. Just go ahead and substitute whatever you have that's similar. So far this project's been really good for me. It's given me a chance to try a lot of different things. I've had a chance to paint up an Ultramarine, a Salamander, a White Scar, and a Dark Angel. These are all firsts for me. From painting Space Marines I've mostly stuck to Blood Angels as that's kind of my wheelhouse. I'm starting this model off the same way I do the majority of mine, laying down Steinle Res Black Primer. It's a really good consistent primer and gives a good solid base. Then I'm going to get my black, add a little bit of white, and a little bit of blue. It's going to give me this blue-gray, and that's what I'm going to be using for my highlight. I'm going to play the blues that are in these highlights off the reds that are going to come in later. And what you're seeing here is I'm using thinned down black to really reinforce that original black armor color. After all that airbrush work is done, I'm going to put down some matte varnish. This is really going to protect the base layer and avoid me ripping any of that off later on. After that it's over to the brush, I'll grab my light umber, I'll be putting that onto the pouches, on the chest eagle, a little bit on the pistol. After those browns are done, I'm going to start introducing my red. This is a bold pyro red. Right now it's just on the shoulder pauldron trim. Eventually it'll be on the pistol and the chain sword and the purity seal on the backpack. Headed back to the chest eagle. I put down that brown to base it for a white and now I'm getting my first layer of white on there. Moving on to the eyes. This along with the weapons are probably the two most important areas on the model because it's what you get drawn to. You automatically look at heads, you look at hands. This is going to be a progression from bold pyrrole red, adding in a little bit of golden orange, then a little bit of straight golden orange, and then the white dot. After that's done, I'm going to mix up my coal black and my bold titanium white, get a nice gray color, and come in and do some highlighting on these joints. I decided that chest eagle wasn't quite enough, so I did a little bit of blue wash across it, and what you're seeing now is me reintroducing white to the highlights. Just trying to bring out the vibrancy but leave that blue undertone in the shadowed area. And then as I go along, I'm going to have some progressive touch-ups with black, just to try and keep the model clean and neat. Now on to the most tedious section, edge highlights. For my first pass at this, I'm just using gray blue, so it's that same coal black, bold titanium white, and I'm just putting in a tiniest drop of blue to give that edge highlight a little bit of a tint. This step takes quite a while, but especially on black armor, it really helps pay off by segmenting out those areas, breaking up and defining your regions. Moving on from there, I'm grabbing silver. This is going to be the only metallic I'm using today. It's going on the chainsword teeth, on the pistol, and on the backpack. For my leather, I like to use some tints and some shades. So adding a little bit of white and a little bit of black to my light umber. And then doing a series of slashes, followed by a series of stippling. Then later on, I come back in with my pure light umber, water it down about two to one thinner to paint, and wash that over the top and it helps blend all that together, but you still see the texture that's in it. Moving back over to the chainsword, I'm glazing in some orange to get the tip of that blade a little bit brighter, just to make a fun transition, something that's visually interesting. Then I'm going to come in with white and edge highlight.
And then since I have that white out, I'm going to go back over all those blue-gray highlights that I did on the black armor and reinforce little spots, little areas with pure white. That's just going to make some visual interest in those key areas and give the edge highlight overall some variation. A little more TLC on the black where it got away from me. As I went into this, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this pistol, but I decided to use red again. A couple factors, it frames in that model really well, and things look better in threes. So now you've got the shoulder, the pistol, and the chainsword all in red. And here we go on the freehand for this one. I have not done any Raven Guard before, so this is something new. It's a fun little experiment. I think the freehand challenge has been one of the biggest things for me. It's been fun to try and block out the images and try and think of how they're going to translate onto the actual armor panel. You can see here, even though I'm going up to pure white, I'm starting out with that, and that's just to get that good coverage, because that white is not going to cover over black very well. Then once it's all blocked in, I'm going to use my black and come back in and cut in all the feathers and all the different black lines that are inside of that shape. Unfortunately, the black that I'm using does not match up with the airbrush highlights that I had, those really nice transitions. So the end result was that around this freehand you had kind of some pure black that doesn't quite match up. If it was a display model, I'd definitely go back and clean it up. But as it's part of a multi-piece display base that is just going to sit on my shelf, I wasn't too worried about it. And in order to show that he's been out there fighting using this sword of his, it's just not pretty and pristine. I'm going to be doing this slashing from the blade away. That emphasizes the wear on the cutting edge and it's peeling that paint backwards as he cuts through things. Alright, and the only Nuln Oil I'm using on these is right now. A little bit on the silvers and a little bit on the shadowed areas of the browns. And that's that. Number five's done. We're over halfway. Four to go. I do think that end result came out really nice. It was the first time doing Raven Guard, and I actually really enjoyed it. It would be fun to do a, a small detachment of these guys. And let's see what we've got next. Out of the four remaining, we're going to be painting... Iron Hands. It'll be interesting to try and differentiate these two. It'll have to be something more than just swapping out red for silver. So we'll see. I'll do my research on Iron Hands and see what I come up with. If you guys enjoyed watching that video, go ahead and hit that like. And if you want to see how this Iron Hands and the rest of the project comes out, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to see any of the guys that I've done previously, you can find that in my first founding playlist. Thanks again for hanging out with me, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.